Hey -o, everyone, and welcome to week four of Five Block Fridays, the series where I make Minecraft creations using just five command blocks. This week we have something that viewers who have been around for a while should appreciate. We are doing Langton's Ant in Minecraft with just five commands. Uh, Langton's Ant is closely tied to a lot of cellular automata. It's not technically a cellular automata itself, it's a type of 2D Turing machine. Um, but similarly, we have a infinite, or in this case, because I'm in the same world, just a very large 2D grid of tiles that can either be on or off. Um, and there's an ant somewhere on that grid that has a location and a direction it's facing. And each frame or each tick it looks at the tile beneath it. If it's a black tile or if it's turned off, the ant turns to the left. If it's a white tile or turned on, the ant turns to the right. And then regardless of which way it turned, it toggles the tile beneath it and then moves forward one space. Um, so how I have it set up here, the chain of command blocks, and this is the same ones I just placed in the bunker, um, each control a single tick of the simulation. Um, so if I have an impulse down here, I can just do one tick at a time. Um, we have an armor stand is the ant. I have a leather cap I'm placing on it just because that makes it easier to see which way it's facing from up above. And then a name tag. We're going to call this armor stand Langton. Um, I'm going to send it through the trap door down to be on the grid. And now we can run one tick at a time of simulation. So it's turning in a little tiny square right now, all the same direction. But now it's going to switch directions. And you can see it's making sort of a simple symmetric pattern at the start. But the fun thing with Langton's Ant is the more complicated behavior that emerges as it goes on. Um, so at the start, it's still going to be making uh, fairly simple, mostly symmetric patterns. But then over time, and I'll have a time lapse at the end of the video you can watch, it becomes more and more chaotic until the conditions get just right and it breaks into what's called the highway, where it just starts going off in a single direction, leaving a repeating trail behind it. And it just continues on infinitely, creating the same trail uh, behind it. So there's kind of three phases to its life cycle, a symmetric patterns phase, a completely chaotic phase, and then a fairly ordered phase as it goes off into infinity. So uh, with that, I'm going to leave this running and let's take a look at the five commands that allow this to work. In this first command, we are executing as armor stands with a name of Langton. This name argument in the target selector will match entities that have been named with a name tag which is very convenient, uh, makes it a lot easier than trying to do NBT lookup, because um, NBT looking up strings can get really messy. We're executing at their position. We check if the block beneath them is white concrete, and if so, we use relative coordinates. We teleport them one quarter block vertically, and then the second part of the teleport command is orientation. So they are rotated 90 degrees to the right of what they were already at. And then this zero is an absolute angle. Um, this is looking up and down. So we're setting them to be looking perfectly level to the ground. This second command is practically identical to the first. Uh, we have the same target selector. The only difference is we're checking if the block beneath us is black concrete. And in the teleport command, we're teleporting three quarters of a block vertically and 90 degrees to the left. In this third command, we're using the same target selector, but we have added this align y subcommand 
A line basically is a, a rounding subcommand for the execution position. So earlier we teleported ourselves a quarter or three quarters of a block vertically. This align y is saying our execution position is now back at that original position, essentially. Uh, we don't have any decimal component on our y coordinates. And then this if statement is if entity at s. So if the entity executing this command is between 0.2 and 0.3 blocks of the execution position. Um, so this will only match those armor stands that teleported a quarter block vertically earlier. And then in the run statement, we're just setting the block beneath us to black concrete. This fourth command is nearly identical to the third command. The only difference is in this if statement, we're checking if the distance is between 0.7 and 0.8 blocks. And then if it matches, we set the block to white concrete. This last command is what moves the armor stand forward at the end of the tick. So we have the same target selector still executing at the armor stand's position. This rotated subcommand ensures that the command is executed as though we're facing the same way as the armor stand, which is important for this next subcommand. Uh, positioned caret 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 one is using local coordinates to say execute one block directly in front of our previous execution position. Um, a line x y z is cutting off the decimal component of the coordinates for the execution position. And then in our run statement, we're teleporting the armor stand half a block forward in x and z and keeping the same y coordinates. Combined with the align XYZ, this guarantees that the armor stand is now in the center of the block, um, and this will correct for any drift that occurs over time from the armor stand not facing you know, directly along one of the axes at the start. Well, that is it for this episode of Five Block Fridays. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new with the commands. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like or a comment down below. If you have any questions about the commands or suggestions for future episodes, make sure to leave a comment. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. I have a few more math things planned, um, just need to iron out a couple things with the commands, but I should have Conway's Game of Life working with just five command blocks in the next couple of weeks, and a Sierpinski triangle generator using just five command blocks. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next Friday.